You've decided you're ready to become a parent, and suddenly you're overwhelmed with people who feel they have the right to inform you on the correct way to conceive, give birth, what fears you should have, and the proper way to parent. How do you filter through the opinions? How do you know what's trustworthy information and what's a myth or just plain outdated? Welcome to the Birth Ease Podcast. Join your host, Michelle Smith, and her guests as they cut through the noise and fear by sharing valuable tips, tools, and proven methods to help you connect with your own inner wisdom as you navigate the sacred journey that is pregnancy, birth, and parenthood in a more relaxed and confident manner. This podcast does not constitute, nor is it intended, as medical advice. Hello, Birthies families. Welcome to the one-year anniversary of the podcast. I am so excited to be at this point, and I really want to thank you all so much for listening and for supporting the show. I appreciate it more than I can ever express. And I have to say, what a year this has been. Who would have thought that 2020 would be unfolding like this? And for my family, this past year has been a year filled with extreme grief, loss, separation, and transition, which has all been heightened by the pandemic. We're all grieving globally the loss of connection among so many other things. And I have to say that this podcast has pushed me in ways I did not foresee when I began the journey last February. When I compared launching the podcast to pregnancy and birth in my first episode, I didn't quite realize how accurate that was. This podcast has been a huge commitment of time, money, resources, and I have had many late nights up worrying about my podcast, my baby, and many late nights up editing and writing show notes. It has forced me to spend a lot more time on social media, more than is good for my own well-being. I'm one of those people that is just very empathic and sensitive and takes things to heart. And being on social media so much has really put a knock on my emotional and mental well-being, I must say. Not that I don't want to be aware, but seeing all of the fighting and cruelty and the lack of compassion for one another as human beings is more than disheartening. And hosting a podcast, it takes a big chunk of my time and energy away from my children. And that's something I'm struggling with, especially as I've been supporting them through the grief of losing our beloved family members and pets and just the big transitions that we've all gone through. And honestly, I've had times where I wondered, why am I doing this? And at times, I really wanted to quit. And as I reflect back, I wonder how I managed to keep up with the show while navigating everything that has happened since I began the process to launch the podcast. And yet, I remind myself of the good that it's brought me, the growth that it's brought me, putting my voice out there and creating a space for others to have their voice to be heard. And ultimately, My goal with this podcast is simply that if each episode brings some benefit to just a few people, then it's all worth it. And I am just so grateful for the support of you, the listeners, my birthies families, for my friends and family. Thank you, Abby, for believing in me. And I'm so grateful for my podcasting mentors at Turnkey Podcast Productions. They were like my doula to help me birth the podcast and take care of this baby all on my own once their initial support was over. Yet during this year, there have been points where I felt overwhelmed and their voices have reassured me that what I was feeling is normal at different stages along the way. 
And when I started this podcast, my focus was to help filter out the noise and the stress that's coming at us in so many different directions. I wanted to highlight the ways that stress impacts us during pregnancy, birth, and postpartum, and also to provide supportive resources to help mitigate that stress, such as yoga, chiropractic care, acupuncture, and oriental medicine, cranial sacral therapy, massage and body work, as well as the sage advice from midwives. And I was also honored to have an obstetrician share so candidly on the show. The podcast has traveled into some really difficult places, such as pregnancy and infant loss, grief, human rights and childbirth, birth trauma, and the disparities birthing families face. It hasn't exactly been the most light and fluffy podcast, but... These are experiences that beg to be heard, honored, and held within a healing space, all of which I feel is even more vital in these unprecedented times that we're in. And I'm so grateful that the podcast has allowed me to have some enlightening and meaningful and even juicy conversations with some of my dear colleagues that I admire most with some of my wonderful clients that took the risk to openly share their birth stories in hopes of helping other families, and the opportunity to talk with really incredible people and birth professionals that I never would have met otherwise. While at times really overwhelming, the podcast has also brought me deep comfort in these conversations as I have worked through the grief and shock that these last 19 months have brought to my family and me. Some days, my guest's voice provided me the means to simply focus on the sound of their voice and to return to center. So my dear guests, if you're listening, please know what a blessing you are to those you serve and to me. In each interview, I ask my guests to share something that they would like to leave the birthies families with, a pearl of wisdom, so to speak, a common theme that has run throughout these pearls, their thoughtful replies, has been to trust your instinct, trust your gut as a parent. This is such valuable advice, and teaching or reminding parents how to connect with their own inner wisdom has been a main focus in my childbirth classes and as a doula for almost 20 years now. And yet, I realize that it is something that people may have lost the ability to know how to do. This advice to listen to your gut or the wisdom of your body or your heart song, as my dear friend Susan DeCinzi says, may even feel foreign. I think that this ability gets taught out of us, how to trust our inner wisdom, our gut, our instincts. We are often told from the time that we are small, how to feel, what to think, and even what we're feeling. As children, we may hear, stop crying, it isn't that bad. Or a child may ask, why are you sad, mommy? And mom wipes away her tears and replies, I'm not sad, honey. I'm okay. Or sometimes children sadly hear, it's stupid that you feel that way. Just stop it. Or stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about. You're making me mad. Or a child may tell their parent, I'm scared. I don't want to go there. And the parent replies, it's fine. Don't be a baby. Just go. Or a child may say, Dad, that person makes me scared, or they're mean to me. And Dad replies, What are you talking about? They're so nice. They're your friend. Or they love you. They're family. Or an even deeper wounding, a child or adult shares that they are abused and the person discounts it or denies it, says not to talk about it, or blames the child. This list can go on and on. Teachers, caregivers, medical providers, social media. And for those of us with a history of trauma, it can be even more complicated. 
The advice to listen to your gut or the wisdom of your body can even be triggering. I think we have to learn or relearn that we can trust ourselves. We can trust our bodies. The work is to distinguish past painful learning, where our subconscious is protecting us within that, and our gut knowing. Perhaps we need to unravel where logic, reason, science is most often viewed as superior to gut knowing, to our heart song, to our inner wisdom. Where is there space for both? Most people don't even know how to truly listen to someone else, much less themselves. Their emotions, their feelings, their bodies. Our bodies cry out to be heard, but many of us shove that down and ignore it. Work through exhaustion, pain, fatigue, grief. It is work to learn to trust our intuition and the wisdom of our body, especially when we have never been taught how to, or we have been continuously shut down when we do. Therefore, one of my goals in this next year of the podcast is to explore the ways that we can connect with our inner wisdom and trust ourselves Because in that trusting of ourselves, it allows us to be more present, more loving, guardians, parents of our children. And one of my favorite resources to begin to do this is Natasha Salaviv's book, The Dance of Parenting. Her process, which she calls the love way, listening, oming, or getting centered, visioning, voicing, and exploring. This amazing process provides a framework to begin to listen to the inner promptings within, skills to give voice to it and communicate your needs. You can learn more about the love way in episode 14 and episode 38 of the podcast. Other episodes that come to mind are Kathy Tagadine's episode where she shares her incredible journey of healing through learning to listen fully to her body. And that is episode 28. And if you're someone that has experienced trauma, whether big T or little t trauma, my interviews with therapist Susan DeCenzi are numbers 24 through 26. And if your pregnancy, birth, postpartum were stressful or traumatic, episode three of the podcast contains a guided relaxation session to help create a healing relational field between parent and child. And that healing can take place at any time. One of the ways in which I help families to access that wisdom, that inner knowing, is through guided relaxation, and going within. And in episode 29, there's a guided relaxation session designed to help you do that, especially in these uncertain times. And episode 30 contains a version of my signature guided relaxation in which families create an inner sanctuary to connect more fully with their child and their womb and and any other children they may have. And it helps to begin that process of going within to find that still, quiet voice, that place of compassion. Because one of the ways to distinguish past painful learning and limiting beliefs that we may have received as children or throughout our life is that heart song, that inner wisdom speaks to you with compassion with love. It may be kind and firm, but the voice of our inner wisdom never calls you stupid, never makes you feel like you're less than. It's encouraging and kind. And many people find that connection to their inner wisdom through their spiritual practices. And learning to trust our inner wisdom is a skill that we need to hone. And the more that you take time to listen, feel what's going on with your body, you learn to create discernment. And it truly is an art of listening. 
and the more we listen and follow it, the stronger it becomes. And honestly, following that impulse, that instinct that told me to attend the new media summit, even though it defied logic in many ways, but I listened to that inner calling, that inner invitation, that knowing that it was something that I was to do. And that's the reason why I'm now sitting here celebrating the one-year anniversary of the Birthies podcast. And so I want to sincerely thank you for listening. Truly thank you. It means the world to me. And it is my deepest wish that the information and the conversations with my guest brings you some of the education, insights, laughter, comfort, and connection that it brings to me each week. So again, thank you. And thank you to all of you that have taken the time to rate, review, subscribe, and share the podcast with a friend or two or three or four. Thank you, because that's how we can get this valuable information to more families. Thank you for listening and celebrating my podcast anniversary. Much love and appreciation to you all. For more great conversations like these, or to find out more information and access Michelle's library of amazing guests, go to birthdeeservices.com forward slash podcast. For more information on the Birthdees method, Michelle's classes, meditations, and other services, go to birthdeeservices.com.